breaking right now. An external security threat has now interrupted House and the senatorial electoral vote count. Both House and Senate are in recess amid protesters breaching the Capitol building. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve staying the course, uh, claiming that the economic rebound effect has been stronger than they thought, but that there's still a ways to go before meeting their employment and inflation goals. For reaction, let's bring in Dallas Fed, former Dallas Fed advisor and Quill Intelligence LLC CEO, Chief Strategist uh, Daniel DiMartino Booth, along with Bianco Research President Jim Bianco. Uh, Danielle, just uh, right off the bat, your thoughts on on this on these minutes. Well, I think the minutes are, are to be expected. The Fed officials acknowledge that there has been some interim slowing. Uh, they alluded to scarring in the labor market. These are these are uh, the, the, these types of messages suggest that they're going to be willing to be very patient in terms of potentially let, letting inflation run a little bit hot in the coming months. Uh, given that we can probably expect to see more in the way of fiscal spending going forward. But there was definitely a lot of consensus. There might be a taper out there that would probably not be uh, priced in and expected by market participants. But again, uh, they did speak to the labor market stuttering, which we did indeed see this morning <coughs> in the ADP results. Yeah, Jim, uh, they, they mentioned adopting uh, uh, qualitative uh, outcome-based guidance, but they didn't actually offer it, and the word tapering did come up. I, 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 it seems like they're having some real difficulty here because it's pretty clear to me that they, they're going to go well beyond 2 percent inflation at some point and that they're loathe to do, take any sort of action in the near term, and I'm talking in the next two or three years. Yeah, that's exactly right. The Fed is going to stay the course. Uh, they're going to embrace uh, higher inflation. Charlie Evans, the Chicago Fed president, earlier this week said regarding inflation, we're in it to win it. Don't doubt them that they are. And the only thing that's going to stop them at this point is going to be the financial markets. So if the Fed says we'll tolerate 2.5% inflation and the financial markets are fine with that, we'll get 25 If they say we're going to tolerate 2.5% inflation, and it's like the fourth quarter of 2018 when they started to taper and the financial markets threw a fit, they'll change the course. So it really comes down to how much can the financial markets tolerate. And right now, the financial markets don't seem that concerned, maybe a little on the edges with higher bond yields today, right. but nothing to get really concerned about. Jim, let me follow up with that because I follow you on Twitter, and it seems to me that you're getting really frustrated because you see inflation perhaps where the government and the Fed won't admit it, and you think if they keep going down this path, at least if I'm interpreting this right, it opens the door for even more, more crazy money printing, things like universal basic income. I mean, there are the vigilantes that you're talking about on Wall Street, they might have existed years ago, but I don't think they're there now. So is this an inevitable path? Yeah, unfortunately, it is. I do think that without a consequence to these policies, look, we had the CARES Act, we had $900 billion, we've mailed money to people, and what happened? People got money, and they felt a little bit better, and the stock market went higher. Everybody won. So what's going to be the reaction of that? We're going to do it again. And what's the re what did Chuck Schumer tweet out this morning? Buckle up. We're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again and again and again until there's a bad reaction a bad reaction is inflation. If you keep putting more and more money in the system, right. eventually you're going to have inflation. And that's what I'm afraid we're going to go down. And right now, without that bad reaction, it's very hard to stop this path that we're on. Uh, Danielle, I'll give you the last word. I got a minute to go. Uh, you know, I, I, I have to I have to concur with, with Jim. And in the background, the backdrop of this is that a lot of a lot of corporate America is going to sit on their hands because they, they know that eventually you're going to have to turn the spigot off or we're going to end up sliding into some form of socialism. So my concern is we've got four and a half, trillion, four and a half million Americans who are permanently unemployed. It looks like we'll see that increase this Friday, given what we're starting to see out of the labor market. So you could have a situation where you've kind of got a sclerotic economic backdrop on one hand, and you're still pumping all of this money to people yeah. who are not working on the other. The best news I've heard today is that the construction firms, the, the stocks of con construction firms have risen. And I hope that that means that future stimulus is actually going to have a return on it, such that taxpayers are not just throwing money into the wind. 
We'll see. We just we know one thing. There's going to be a lot more money printing from the federal government and the Federal Reserve. Danielle, Jim, thank you both very much.